I've tried to recreate the baseline to Sonic Vision by Duran Lan and kept failing because I didn't even know that these two settings existed until I saw them on another synthesizer. And I finally found them on one of my synthesizers. So today we're gonna finally recreate that damn baseline and I'll show you the very important glide or portamento settings that you need to turn on and why they're so important. Plus, it's a super fun setting to use when you're actually playing in your bass lines because it really helps you add some of yourself into your music. Okay, let's listen to the bass line in question. Now, let's kind of listen to my rendition of this track with my bass line. Not bad, right? Chords are different, of course, but we're focused on the bass. Pretty damn close. So this track is Sonic Vision by the absolute legend and one of my all-time favorite producers, Duran Lan. And if you're into it, I have links to all of his stuff down below. But what I find so special about this bass line is the tiny detail of how it slides from note to note, but only between certain notes. Listen again closely. Right, it's da, da, da. So that's where the journey began in trying to recreate this sort of sliding effect. The notes in the bass line were easy to figure out. It's E to A and then A to E again, but an octave down. And my first inclination, which is correct, is to turn on glide. Now, almost all synthesizers have glide or in some cases known as portamento but this is applied all the time to every note you play, right? So it sounds like this. Right, and we can adjust the glide rate, but it's not quite right. We can kind of get there, but going back to the original E note, it has this weird which is not in the original track. So this brings us to our very first important setting, which is legato glide mode and on the pro 3 it's known as fixed time a don't know why it's a it should have been l for legato but fixed time a means glide legato mode what legato means when it is applied to glide is that if i play two notes and while i still hold one note down and choose another note on a monophonic synthesizer it will then glide to that note so let's say here But if I let go of the notes in between playing them, it won't glide. So listen to this. It's only when I'm holding down a note and then I press another note that it will apply that glide. But we're not done because even here, which is it kind of works, but it kind of doesn't. What really, really nails it in my opinion is not fixed time A, but fixed rate A. And the main difference between a glide mode with a fixed rate or fixed time is that time is the duration, the amount of time it's gonna take to go from one note to another. And you might think that's not really that big of a difference, but it is because fixed rate is the speed at which that pitch will travel to that next note. So if two notes are really close to each other and you choose fixed time and you say 10 seconds, it'll take 10 seconds to go from this note to that note or 10 seconds to go from this note to this note. Let's try this out. Now we'll go from this high note. Right, let's just say that took five seconds. Now let's go from two notes that are right next to each other. It's still going to apply that same five seconds, whether it's a note right next to each other or two notes really far apart. It's always going to try and apply and inject this amount of time between those two different note values. Now where fixed rate is really important is that it doesn't care about the distance between the two notes. The rate at which the notes will change will always stay the same. So we can just think of this as, I don't know, 100 miles an hour. It doesn't matter how far the distance is. Let's say we go from this note to this note or from this note to this note. 
that happened really fast because the rate of change didn't have to go that far. It went from here to here. That's the same amount of change from here or here to here. It almost sounds like there's no legato, but there actually is. It's just changing really, really fast. So time is going to inject a specific set amount of time between two notes, no matter where they are. And fixed rate will just keep a constant rate of change. And this is super important to this bass line because you can hear that the bass line slides from one note to another and then from that note to the next at the same amount of time. That's where I was misled in thinking that he was playing the pitch wheel. Bam, uh, da, da. But that is Im almost impossibly hard to do. So changing your setting to fixed rate of time, we'll turn our filter down. Now listen to this. Oh, we need some more speed, more slower speed. Now here's another weird thing that will kind of mess with your brain a little bit. When I was first trying to do this, I was on fixed time, right? And I was like, oh, this needs to be kind of fast to go. But when I switched to fixed rate, I actually had to slow the rate of speed that it would change down. So it almost didn't even reach the other note in time by the time I let go of that note. So going from A to E, it's like, yeah, uh, it kind of lands on it nicely, right? We just gotta make sure we play it correctly. So that was actually really weird because I thought I still needed to be a little quicker. I mean, this is the perfect setting right here around 67 to 64, I kind of found out. But if it was even faster, it's almost like too obvious of a slide amount. It makes it almost cheesy. So there's just this tiny little bit of nuance to say, we're going from this note sliding down and landing, right? If we play this with some drums, let's see. You're starting to hear it, right? So another important thing is kind of the texture of this bass. If I turn our cutoff all the way up, we'll really hear it. It's kind of this sawtoothy sound here, leaning sort of pulse width. And if you push it kind of pulse width, you can kind of get into that weird octave territory, right? Which I don't like. So I kind of go either sawtooth or you can go just straight pulse width. And that also works. But from here, it's so important to turn your filter down, low pass, of course. And to get that bounciness, we're just turning up our filter envelope because without it, very deep. You turn this up. And I'm choosing where it lands really low with my sustain. And then our decay is going to be kind of quick. Too quick? It does this. We don't want that. That's going to say bow, 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 right? Fall down to that. And you can see the pulse width. I'm not into it. I'm going to go back to our sawtooth. That's that like, almost sounds like an upright or some sort of like just electric bass. But what I'm battling, you can hear are those pops. So I'll try and turn wave reset on. Softens it up a little bit. That's just gonna reset our oscillators phase point to zero every time we play a key. And another thing you can do is play with your attack of either the filter cutoff or your amp envelope. We'll try and match these a little bit more. So here we go, let's try that. Oh, we don't want that. That is not, -uh. no good. We want their attack really fast on the filter cutoff, always, I guess. And then turn that up a little bit more. Right, now let's add some chords. Throw that kick out. There it is. Oh. And what I meant by this adds some fun when you're playing is, and like injecting yourself into it, right? Is if we came up with another bass line and say, if I decide to legato some of these notes,
right? It's a new dimension of how you're playing things in. Sure, that bass line sucked, but you get the idea, right? The way I play the keyboard is then going to dictate how the sound is then portrayed within the sequence. And the same thing goes if you were sequencing this with MIDI. You just tie some notes together and it'll know to slide from that note to the next. So again, this thing just sounds too tight. So listen to that. Filter up. Nasty. Too bad. I don't like that. Filter down. There it is. Rumble. Keep it low key. Right? Our resonance isn't even that high. Our resonance is zero. If we turn that resonance up, we get into that weird, almost cheesy kind of territory. It's so hard to talk and play at the same time, in case you haven't noticed. Unless you want that weird acid. Right, and you can see as I'm playing this, some notes are getting kind of tight on top and it's doing that sliding, gliding, whatever would you call it. Anyway, appreciate you, my friend. Thanks so much for coming by. Hopefully you learned something today. If you did, let me know down below. I'd love to hear from you. And until next week, you already know the drill. Share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace. One more time.